Good morning, good morning. Uh, if you're joining us, it's absolutely gorgeous outside. I have two very nervous individuals in the vehicle, uh, and believe it or not, they're law enforcement officers. But we're down here in the beautiful city, uh, Soldier City, St. Cloud, Osceola County, my old stomping grounds. And it is Women's History Month, so I figured, why not reach out to the contacts I have and have some really, really hard chargers join me in results one. So, you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like live, and I'm like, yes, we are live streaming. So I have two of St. Cloud's finest uh, in the vehicle with me today, Captain Roberts here, and uh, Lieutenant De La Rosa, correct? That's correct. Good awesome, morning. good morning guys, thanks for joining me. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> uh, so, super candid conversation. This is by no means a formal kind of discussion. It's pretty much getting to know you guys a little bit, understanding why you're in law enforcement, why you do this crazy job in the first place. Uh, and it's a male-dominated career field. Well, at least it used to be, right? Not, not so much anymore. And I'm figuring you guys are a lieutenant, you're a captain, you didn't join yesterday. Yeah. So, uh, Captain, you go first. Introduce yourself for us, please. Hi, everybody. Um, Captain Denise Roberts. Um, I started with the city of St. Cloud in 2001. Okay. Um, and slowly worked my way through the ranks. Um, so, patrol officer. Um, I did SRO for one year while going to school at night. Um, I did PIO, criminal investigations, got promoted. Um, to sergeant um, within a few years, maybe five or six years. Um, eventually made it to the rank of lieutenant uh, and now currently captain over the criminal investigations division. So um, when you joined, were you, are you a native Floridian or are you, where are you from originally? Um, originally from um, Puerto Rico. All right. Um, so, but I have lived in Osceola County since maybe when I was 10, 11 years old. So okay. I've been here for a while, went to school at Osceola High School. And, All right, go Cowboys. Um, yeah, I'm a Point Siena person. Oh, gotcha, so. gotcha. I won't hold that against yeah, you. Yeah, no one does. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> so, all right. And then, Lieutenant, welcome aboard. Hanging out with Ooh. us in the back there. I've got a camera for you there. Um, Lieutenant, how long you been down here as well? Talk to me a little bit. Yeah, so I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Uh, moved down in 19... 99, so it's been a while, been here a while. <laughs> Started with the St. Cloud Police Department in 2006. Okay. And like Captain Roberts, I also moved up the ranks. Um, I did begin my career in dispatch communications. All right. And um, currently holding the rank of lieutenant. Through the years, I was a detective, I did um, street crimes, I did um, internal affairs as a sergeant, currently overseeing that as a lieutenant now. Okay. It can't be easy. That's an interesting job. Challenging. Challenging, right? It's challenging. But that, I think that's what we signed up for. We, we're the type of, of, of individuals that are up for those kind of challenges. And this profession most certainly has its plethora of oh, challenges. Oh, 100%. Now, did both of you guys start your careers in law enforcement with St. Cloud? Or did any of you guys have any experience elsewhere? Um, so I started with the city of Kissimmee in 1997. Okay. I started in dispatch. Um, so you they, both are former dispatchers. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, that was at the time I thought I wanted to be a paramedic and a firefighter. So um, I worked my way in through dispatch, um, but slowly but surely figured out that I wanted to wear blue. Okay. Um, and I pursued a career in law enforcement. Um, got sponsored through the academy. Um, did community service officer and eventually got recruited to come here um, in 2001. Nice, so LT. I've been, I've been at St. Cloud. The whole time? Career. My whole career. That's pretty cool. It's fantastic. I, yeah, I think the fact that, so I was a desk sergeant in the Air Force, which is just a fancy tape name for master control of dispatch. And I do think you guys having former dispatch experience makes you 100% Absolutely. a better cop on the road. Absolutely. Like, what would you think, what would you say that job set you up for success in the active job that you both are doing. You both could answer that one. Can I go first? Sure. For me, communicating with somebody on the phone that is in crisis, crisis mode, right. or having one of the worst days of their lives, and not being physically able to interact with that person takes a very effective communicator to have that person remain on the line and provide pertinent information. So right, shout right. out to all the dispatchers who do a phenomenal job every day. Um, 
and yes, it did help effect, uh, it, it did help us, I, 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 would, I think Captain Roberts would agree, it helped us become, or be better communicators, because we, we've been doing that. Do you guys both learn, like, that you don't have to swallow the mic or scream into the microphone when you're talking to your dispatchers now, because you know the former experience of sitting there, wait a second, let's start talking, because I'm sure you guys, even as supervisors here, your, your road guys on the road when they get excited, and it's like, chill out. It, it ain't that big of a deal kind of thing. Yeah, we definitely see it from both perspective um, and definitely appreciate all of our dispatchers. Um, they're 100% our lifeline. Right. Um, but I think it does help us out on the field, too. Um, as Lieutenant De La Rosa mentioned, um, you know, you're dealing with somebody in crisis, so you have that firsthand experience from seeing it from one side, mm -hmm. um, from the initial aspect, and then that just makes you a better communicator um, out on the road and out on the field dealing with individuals. When you guys were looking to get into the life of public service, walk me through a little bit your parents' perspective of this gig, because, oh. like, I'm a guy and my mom was already freaking out. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I can only imagine like I'm not even a parent I'm a dog parent very proud dog parent but it's nothing compared to being a parent of children I could not imagine my daughter saying I'm gonna be a cop walk me through that a little bit especially uh, are you Latin also yeah I could okay so American descendant as well. okay say mm -hmm. me too I look like I'm from Oklahoma but <laughs> Puerto Rican mom's from the west side of the island um, Puerto Rican parents we all could talk about that like yes very protective no matter how old you are almost 40 and my mom calls me every day talk to me how'd you decide and how were your parents through the evolution of that oh my goodness <laughs> um, and then talk up just a little bit for me guys yeah I should uh, let my dad answer that one um, <laughs> okay. um, Poppy, if you're watching yes um, dad um, she put you on the spot <laughs> yeah thank you to my family for all of their support um, but it wasn't easy right um, I think he was uh, when I was pursuing the firefighter field, an EMS field, I, I think they were okay with that. Uh, law enforcement, not sure that they were quite ready, but yeah. they've been 100% supportive. And, um, and I think, you know, now looking back from 97 when I first started in the public safety field to right. now currently 2023, um, I, I, I hope that I've made them proud. So. Oh, I love this. I love this kind of stuff. Ma'am, LT? Yeah, so my mom has always known, I think, that I was going to be a headstrong individual. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> That's a, such a nice way to put it. Headstrong individual. She will tell me from the moment I was in her room. She knew. Um, so I, I don't think it came as a surprise that I was going to go into this type of work or field. Um, I considered you know, in my younger years maybe military route. Okay. Um, but I pursued law enforcement and I'm I'm the better person for it. I'm glad I did, and this is an honorable profession. Uh huh. Um, and yeah, so they've been supportive all the way. So, being women in law enforcement, give me the best part about being a female in law enforcement, and maybe some of the challenges that you were able to overcome or learning experiences uh, through that. Because I don't think I think challenges. I don't see challenge as a negative thing. I think challenges we get to learn and or teach other people. Uh, Talk to me a little bit about that, either one of you. Um, well, I can tell you when I first started, um, there was only a few of us. We're slowly growing in numbers. Yep. Um, we have um, Sergeant Melinda, shout out to her. She's at the yes, office right yep. now. But, um, so we have three females in our police department. Am I correct? How many? Three in um, leadership ranks. Three in leadership ranks. Yeah, That's three nice. leadership ranks. So shout out to Sergeant Melinda. She's at the office right now. She's over our training unit. So you're next, Sergeant. I yeah, promise. you're yeah. next. We'll we talk should, training next time. We should time. go get her. She actually <laughs> started maybe one year before me. Um, so um, you guys got to go through the career with each other. Yeah, That's absolutely, one hundred percent. So you know, obviously, like we've had our challenges, um, but we're strong and. Uh, we're career focused and we have worked hard and I can tell you everything that um, it, it's been a, a challenging experience um, but it's also been one that's been worthwhile right um, and that uh, you know I have truly enjoyed uh, my time here you know I can tell you like from the bottom of my heart um, I care about this community I do this job because I believe in it I believe in our department I believe in our our focus our our mission and uh, you know, like there's no other job that I would rather do. It like, is the I, coolest job yeah. in the world. Uh, 
like uh, right now I'm in criminal investigation so there you know there's a, a part of law enforcement you know I, I love every position that I've worked in law enforcement and I go net my all um, but being able to solve cases and bring resolutions to families and justice um, um, for victims and our families it just it just makes it everything worthwhile. That's um, awesome. So, yes, it came with its challenges. Yeah, we worked hard, um, but we're strong, we're focused, and um, I, I don't regret the path that I've taken in my career. Well, it's, it's a successful path. You, you're rocking the captain rank. That is by no means, for those that are not familiar with law enforcement, an easy place to make it to once you separate from sergeant to LT. You've entered a different world of business. Yeah. LT, talk to me a little bit about it, because. I, I, I've seen some of your y'all's career, and as you're going through things, what would be the biggest thing you'd say you've learned in, in your career so far? What was the, what, the biggest one? The biggest thing you've learned it, it, oh, as Lord. as oh, as both a, a police officer and a female in law enforcement. Yeah, so for sure, I can just tell you we are learning every day. The learning never stops. For right. everybody that thinks that we've got it all figured out, we don't. There's yeah, new right. technologies. There's new, you know, we know we, we implement new laws all the time. So this is constantly evolving. And I guess the biggest thing that Captain Roberts and I probably share is that we've been able to evolve. And, and that sometimes isn't easy for some uh, of the more stubborn law enforcement officers that don't want to get with the program and You're don't right. want to get with the changes. So we have been adaptable and we have evolved with the times. And like I said, it's an honor for us to be here because we are reflective of our community. Our right. community has expanded, it has also evolved. So I like that you're showcasing this opportunity to talk about females in law enforcement, but also Latina females in law enforcement. Amen. We're reflective of our community. Yeah. We have had a large influx of 43% in the past four years. I'll throw this stat out there. I won't you yeah, give, give you, you give, make you guys tell. Yeah, 43% yeah. we're talking here in Osceola County. And let's talk specifically about St. Cloud. Sure. I know. I know I used to live out here for a long time out in the manor and St. Cloud is a different breed of community. It is extremely diverse. Uh, you guys are growing rapidly uh, to the point of adapting with things. You guys just got a new chief that should not be drinking any caffeine under any <laughs> circumstance and uh, has come to you guys with mass amounts of change in technology yes. and advancements and stuff. That's got to be it's got to be kind of fun to be part of something that fantastic. you guys have both been on for a while. It's fantastic. And she wouldn't say you guys were bad oh. if we were streaming <laughs> right now, chief, cuz uh, no. he's probably watching right now. He yeah. has pushed our department and taken us leaps and bounds in the short amount of time that yep. he's been here. Um, and I'm sure Captain Roberts can attest to that cuz she works a little closer, you know, with him with the project. So we have state of the art equipment, we purchased the I know you guys have new, a new camera that's system, that's the that's new that's camera system, absolutely. The training simulator. Yeah. yeah. We can't even he, keep up with it. It's it doesn't, so he's, he's still trying to get me to come down and do the simulator. Yeah. Uh, should. I should. Yeah. For, in the current time that we're in, you know, law enforcement can get an interesting rap. And when people say that, I'm always quick to be like, well, they're doing the job that you choose not to do. Uh, I'm a big defender of law enforcement publicly and privately. For those that are looking to get into law enforcement in 2024, a, a lady that is looking to start her career, what kind of advice could you guys give somebody if they came to you right now and said, Captain LT, I want to join law enforcement, what should I do? I think education is key. Um, you got to be a good communicator, good with technology. Um, as you stated, you know, law enforcement is changing, a lot of technology being thrown at us. Um, laws are constantly changing, so education is, you know, that's our, my biggest advice. Um, you know, have a good head on your shoulder, be humble, um, understand that, you know, you're dealing with people in crisis um, a lot of the time, so be patient, um, treat others the way you want to be treated, um, treat everybody like a family member. Um, and you know have a goal in mind okay stick to it um stay focused educate yourself never stop learning and go for your dreams you know like this put that on a, a recruiting poster yeah right this there. has been a, a career of our dreams um and you know we've 
successfully um, represent our community, Latinos out there, um, and that anything is possible. You know, for all the young ladies out there, you know, like we're a testament mm -hmm. that you can you can achieve anything you want to achieve as long as you put your mind to it. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's going to be tough. I, I was going to be like, look, <laughs> this is a hard place to. Yeah, 100. To start. I would like um, to, oh, I'm sorry. No, go for it, LT. No, compassion and integrity. That's biggest thing. Biggest thing in this profession, and also understanding this profession is all encompassing. We are teachers. We are first responders. We are. Not a lot of people want to understand that. I, I don't are, think. We are all encompassing. We are doing all that in a very short amount of time to help somebody in the state of need or in their crisis and if you cannot be compassionate to your fellow mankind then maybe this profession isn't for you because it does come challenging and and also checking your ego to the side understanding that we're in a position of authority and some people are not gonna it doesn't resonate with them they don't want to be told what to right. do but it's in the best interest of the society of the community or their families um i just wanted to go back to the challenges real quick before i forget yeah I think one of the challenges, maybe Captain Roberts will agree with me, is um, doing this profession while maintaining a family. We're moms. Right. So I know you asked us about being daughters, but more importantly, we're mothers ourselves with daughters. So being a role model. To that was going to be my last one. So I'm perfect. Sorry. No, this is good. This is good. I, you guys are getting comfortable. I noticed it. No, it's good. But, but that's, that's a great point. Itself also, just maintaining that work life balance, it's, it's, it's difficult. And, you know, Captain Roberts, you you publicly here in the community you are a survivor a cancer survivor uh and i remember when all that was happening this city really rallied around you big yes, time did. uh and to do that in the position that you guys are in you guys have to keep face and no one i say no one really cares at the end of the day what we're going through as law enforcement officers when we're there on scene we've got to, and we've got to check ourselves and put that aside but you you guys are both, you just said parents, you're going through things at home, and when you come to work, you literally have to put that on pause. How are you guys able to do that in a sense of, because in my mind, being a mom comes first, number one. And when you're at the job, how do you, how are you able to balance that? Because the job doesn't care if you're a mom or you're a dad. But the, agency, <laughs> but the agency does, and you'll, you'll, have, you'll find that the support of your command staff or your chief or your supervisors, that's where that compassion also comes in internally, not just with the public, but also with your employees and your staff. And this department, I can only speak for our, our agency, yep. has been wonderful in that, very supportive. We have peer support, we have EAP, um, you know, if, if it was something crucial or right. something serious happening, um, and our personal support systems that we have. It's, it's important. It you guys, you well. two seem like you have a really good relationship with each other. Yep. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've been able to see her as a mentor. And right. right. If she can do it, I can do it. Right. And that's what I want other people to see, other females to see. Anybody. But, but for the females, I want them to know. Of course. There are people that have gone before you that have paved the way and will continue to do that. Man, you guys are walking sound bites. <laughs> ready to rock and roll. So, uh, I'm not going to... Uh, put you guys completely through the ringer. So nice little introduction to the results one Trooper Steve stream today. Uh, I want to thank you guys for one your time, your service, and uh, I've I, I live in a weird bubble, so I get to watch you guys from a distance. Uh, even when you don't think I'm watching, I get to see different information from different PDs, and you two have been going non-stop in your career since my Trooper Steve stuff started. Uh, and I've been able to watch. I, I'm great friends with your chief. You guys have an amazing department. Where it was 15 years ago to where it is today is not the same police department. And I think that is a good thing. Uh, the community too. The community too, I think, looks at the St. Cloud Police Department 100% different than what they did 20 years ago. And I do think that has to do with the people joining through the St. Cloud Police Department, the people leading it, you guys, and uh, the community just understanding you guys have a job to do. Yeah. So, Captain, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. LT, I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, you guys are welcome in the truck anytime. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I do think I'll take you guys up on that uh, training offer 
and come and uh, do that oh, absolutely. and do the simulator one time with you guys and we'll do a whole stream and stuff like that so that'll be fun so I guess uh, I'm now headed to Point Siena and I'm gonna go air boating there's airboats down there That's or something. It's a beautiful day. It is gorgeous outside, so we're going to do that. Ladies, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Uh, we'll wrap this up while we're in the truck. You guys can watch this over at clickorlando.com, News 6 Plus, and the News 6 app. Make sure you are following St. Cloud Police Department on all their uh, platforms because... That's how they keep in touch with you guys. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that fun stuff. Of course, you can always come down here if you want to talk to them over on Neptune Road. Uh, they have a pretty fancy PD that's uh, maintained its course for a really long time. A uh, great little location here. I say that just because the building doesn't ever look old and it's the same building yes. forever yeah. and it has We're an age. We've outgrown it. We've outgrown it. We've well, you guys, we have outgrown it for sure. give it a couple of years and you guys are going to be past harmony. I have looked at studies and I am yeah, terrified for you guys. Definitely growing. But obviously you will be hiring yes, and all yes. that fun stuff. So uh, thank you guys for Women's History Month. You guys can watch this in full over at clickorlando.com. Uh, for now, I'll leave you guys uh, to have a beautiful day and uh, take it easy. Bye. Thanks. Bye.